this is my basement. I don't show this space much because it's unfinished and we only really use it for storage. But this china cabinet is why I'm here right now. It has great storage potential, but man, is it outdated. This china cabinet does have sentimental value to me. My parents bought it the year I was born. It's not an heirloom. It's not vintage. It's just old. I'm Anna, and I'm giving this china cabinet an epic overhaul. First, I need to take it all apart. Doors off, drawers out, and I even had to remove a wooden spoon. Yes, a wooden spoon that my mom used to prop up a shelf. Sadly, that's not going back. I feel like this cabinet is a mashup of every style the company could come up with. Arabesque details on the upper doors, dental molding, French decorative applique, and I have no words for what was done to the two doors from the base cabinet. I also removed almost all the hardware and collect it into a little jar. Don't even think about that metal swirly thing staying. Since my childhood, I remember those rattling every time we opened or closed the doors. Bye bye The china cabinet's completely disassembled. Well, as much as I can disassemble it. I removed the drawers, taken off the doors, and removed all the hardware. So now it's on to the most boring part of the whole project, cleaning it. I grabbed me some TSP, which I'm going to mix into a spray bottle and spray everything, let it sit for about five minutes, and then give it a good rinse and scrub and get rid of this boring part and do something more fun. Once oils and 40 years of buildup were washed off, I sanded, a lot. I don't need to get back to bare wood, not that all of this is really wood, but my goal was to remove the glossy finish. I want to paint over a dull flat surface. Comparing these two doors, yes, the one is dusty, but this shows the difference in the sheen. The right side is much glossier and the left side is what I need. The aesthetics of the cabinet aren't really that bad. I really like the drawers. I love how they're trimmed out. Those look really good. But there's two parts that are just a little too, I don't, I don't know if to call it 70s. They're just too ugly. So I want to get rid of them. One of them is this molding detail right here, this trim piece. I don't like this. It's too country, so I don't love that. And then the cabinet doors, the base cabinet doors. I don't know that trim that's on there. Okay, that's just really ugly. So I want to take that off. Now, I am naive about most how easy projects can be. So I just think I can like probably chisel this off. And Ralph is convinced that there's no way I can do that without like totally trashing the whole piece. But um, I'm willing to take the risk. And I was going to try it first off camera, but I thought that's not real. So I'm going to do both this on camera, just try to chiseling it off and then the worst part the moldings on the doors those seem like they're glued on with i don't know some toxic horrible super strong industrial strength 1970s glue that is like probably banned now so those I, i'm probably gonna like shear off pieces of wood with that but that's okay i mean there's always like i can turn it into shelves but right now i have uh some tools and I'm going to try to remove this. In the end, this piece is not going to be here. So let's have some fun. Not too bad. I didn't damage it much. There are still some spots that I have to chisel out and I have to remove the pins. But other than that, it's not really damaged. That was applied on there a bit stronger than I was expecting though. I did, I did have to put some muscle into the, I mean, barely muscle, but you know, some muscle into the hammering, but I'm, I'm pretty happy. All right, this is done. Now the drawers, which the doors, I, I'm certain they're not gonna be this easy, but uh, they're gonna be a lot of fun. So, cause I'm not worried about damaging them. Like, I mean, I don't like them, so 
there's other options if I really trash the wood, but okay, let's go do that. The most surprising, but also kind of most 70s part of these doors is that the hideous at the case aren't even wood or even a wood-ish material. They're foam. I am so pleased with myself right now. I did it. The ugly parts are gone and I didn't really damage too much of the wood. Whatever is damaged, I can fix that with just some wood filler, I think. So the next steps are gonna be sanding and then wood filler, and then, I don't know, you'll have to see. This here is my palette for the china cabinet. First thing, I'm going to paint both pieces with this fusion paint in the color Ash. It's a really rich, deep, deep, dark gray. Just this, I think, will modernize the whole piece. Then I picked out some gold hardware, and I do notice that they are slightly different gold, but hopefully I can get away with it. I picked them up from the ReStore, and I just like the shape. It's a modern, kind of cute shape. I didn't have enough of these little knobs, but thankfully Home Depot still carries them, so ordered a couple more. So I have enough now. And the last thing I'm going to do is I want to wallpaper the back of the cabinet. So I picked up this peel and stick wallpaper from Home Depot and it has like a grass textured finish and it's actually really, really nice looking. But I went thrifting with my nieces and I found this. It's another wallpaper and it's cream with some gray lines and the gray lines really match the ash paint. And the best part about this was the price. $7.99 instead of 40 something dollars for the peel and stick. So I'm definitely gonna be going with this option and I'll feel like I'm saving money, maybe. But if this was a room and I was putting it up like a bedroom or a bathroom, I would definitely go with this nicer wallpaper. It is significantly nicer, but for the back of a china cabinet, $7.99 wins. It's not pre-pasted, so I did look at options about buying wallpaper paste, but I'm not doing a wall. It's again, just the back of a china cabinet. So I'm going to either use school glue or Mod Podge. I'm sure they'll hold up perfectly. But before I can get to these really fun, pretty bits, I still have a little bit of work to do on the cabinet to get it ready. Taking off this backer board is my last bit of disassembly. This is the piece that I want to cover in wallpaper and it's only held in by staples. So taking it off and putting it back on should be pretty straightforward. Before I move on, I gave every nook and cranny a final clean with warm water. Today, I start painting. I'm a little apprehensive to do this. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I've never used this paint or this is the biggest piece I've ever painted. And because I'm actually going to keep it here, like it's actually going to be something, it's going to be a piece of my house. So I just feel like it's just really big and I don't know, I'm just a little apprehensive. But I think once I get started, I'll be fine. And I'll be able to see what I think about this fusion paint. A lot of people rave about it. Um, it's self-leveling, so hopefully it hides my mistakes. But I do have a lot of painting and I'm hoping today to get the first coat on everything. Now you can see I did tape up some parts, so not every square inch is going to be painted. I tried to um, pick and choose what's going to be painted and what's not. And I still have that wallpaper to use, that $7.99 cheapo wallpaper. So I wanna use that in a few spots. So I'm not painting every, every little bit, but I do wanna get at least the first coat done. And I'm painting indoors because this paint is low VOC and it's air conditioned in here and it's uh, not so humid and not so many bugs. So I'm gonna try doing everything of the painting part inside. Whew, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be fun, right? Right, let's get started. My thoughts on fusion mineral paint. I love painting with it, like love. The paint reminds me of a stain. It's watery like a stain, not thick like a paint, 
but it's super pigmented, also like a stain. It doesn't have a strong smell at all, and it's water-based, so cleanup was really easy. Just soap and water. One thing I found really interesting is that it didn't drip. It just stuck to the brush. My only trips happen when I took off the lid after shaking the container. It's just not messy. I did not use a primer or a top coat, just two coats of paint. I invested in a decent round brush, the kind you use for chalk paint or wax, and I think the brush did make a difference in how easy and smooth the paint application was. This color Ash is a dark gray that really pulls a lot of blue. I think of this mostly as a blue cabinet now. I do notice fingerprints and marks from us touching it. They wipe off easy. I'm not sure if these marks happen only because it's such a dark color. Maybe lighter colors don't do this. But as is a storage cabinet in my basement, it's not going to get daily use. So this doesn't really bother me. I'm just interested in trying a lighter color and seeing how that goes. All in all, five stars. I recommend this paint every day of the week, worth every penny. Second coat is done. That means everything that had to be painted with the Fusion Ash paint has had two coats and it's done. And today is like a really ugly gray day out. It's rainy, just blah. So I thought it'd be a nice treat to take off the tape. That's like the best part about painting is taking off the tape and seeing the, ooh, reveal. I don't know if it's a real, it's just fun. So I'm gonna do that now. This is the base of the china cabinet and you must have seen all these dings here along the edge. And you're probably wondering why I didn't just paint this gray. Well, there's two reasons. One, I wanted the base to have the same contrast that I left on the top of the cabinet, where it's like little swooshes still brown. And also, and more practically, I wanted to leave this surface bare so I wouldn't scuff it whenever I put the top on or whenever we moved it. So I thought this finish it's survived 43 years, so it could survive some more, and I'm just gonna touch up these dings. Now, I'm not a furniture restorer, so I don't really have like the exact answer how to do this, but I do have some brown paints, some paint brushes, and I'm gonna try covering it up. Okay, so I wasn't loving the progress with the paint, but while I was doing it, I remembered I have all these like wood scratch fix things. I have like a bin of it. I completely forgot. This should work better. So let's give this a try. These are all the hinges from the china cabinet. They are brown, which isn't too bad. I just think they'll look better gold to match the rest of the hardware. So my idea is to spray paint them just really lightly with some gold spray paint. I don't wanna to do too much so I don't like clog up the mechanism. And then any part that is showing more, like the little tips here, I'm gonna add a little bit of rub and buff. Before I do any of that though, I do need to give them a bit of a wash so the paint sticks well. I just here have a bucket of warm soapy water. It's just Dawn dish soap. I'm gonna give them a wash and let them dry and then spray tent. I love that thing. The hinges are dark brown-ish, but I want them to match the hardware. Now, this isn't just an excuse to spray paint. Having the hardware all the same color will pull the design together. That's what I'm telling myself. Maybe I just want to spray paint. I love spray painting. Yes, I'm still in the same basement, and I'm actually in the exact same spot that I've been recording all this video so far, but we added a temporary backdrop, just some wallpaper up to brighten the space, and we added some new lights, just so when I'm working, I can see, and more importantly, you can see what I'm doing. Ralph is totally embarrassed about this, because it's just wallpaper over cardboard, and it does look a bit janky, but I wanted something brighter and lighter and we are going to finish this basement eventually. And we didn't want to be wasteful. We didn't want to put up drywall and then have to tear it all down. So we did something temporary as long as it's bright and cheerful, right? Well, 
Now I can do some more wallpapering. I, today my goal is to wallpaper the backs of the china cabinet and some of the drawers and the doors. So I have my glue and my paper and hopefully that doesn't look as ghetto as this. My original plan for the wallpaper was to just use school glue or Mod Podge because that's what I had on hand. But on my many trips to Home Depot this past weekend, I picked up this border adhesive. It's just like a wallpaper glue, I guess for borders, but it was on clearance for like more than 60% off. So I grabbed myself a couple of jugs of this. It does work really well. If I apply it to both the backer board and the wallpaper, it just, it's really, it's a really smooth, nice finish. So that's what I'm going to be doing. The piece I'm working on right now, this is the back of the bottom of the china cabinet. So it's not a part that you're really gonna see too often. So that's why I'm working on it first. Well, I'm gonna get rolling. Hey, guess what? Everything's done. By everything, I mean like the painting and the wallpaper and all that's done. I can finally start putting it together. By I, I mean me and Ralph. Some of those pieces are pretty awkward and heavy, so it'd be easier if me and Ralph do it together. So we're gonna try to see how much we can get done today. Hopefully it's everything, because I'm really excited to see what it looks like. I've absolutely loved this project. It's been so fun. What do you think? I think my brother Andrew summed it up best when he said, it looks bougie. By 70s, hello bougie. And if you're looking for more bougie-ness in your life, hit that subscribe button. I love this project and I already have other furniture makeovers coming up. So if there's something you want me to try or a certain type of furniture you want me to make over, leave me a comment letting me know. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you soon with another project. Bye. I had to wait like 20 minutes for the air conditioning to stop. So I was like waiting, standing around here. So then I went upstairs and like got upstairs, was about to start knitting and it stopped. So after standing around forever, I had to just come right back down, but it's done. The things I do for you.